Did you know you could easily stylize your D5 renders to make them look just like this? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I made these images. I'm gonna break down all the settings so you can apply this to your own work. It's super easy and we'll be able to do this in a couple minutes. So let's get started. I've got this awesome kitchen scene from one of our Academy users, Monique, uh, love it. So what I've got here is the first effect we can use. And this is a simple outline. So check this out under effect. So go to effect. Go all the way down, make sure you have nothing selected or then this won't appear. If you go all the way down, you're gonna see two important settings. You're gonna see AO and outline mode. So I'm gonna turn them off just so you can see what happens. This looks like our typical rendering. AO is going to add a little bit of contact shadow. It's gonna look like a clay mode, if that makes sense. But basically it's adding all these shadows because there's a lot of shadows in the, in the world, especially in corners, right? And that's what gives the renderings that sense of depth. And that's kind of the difference between a flat rendering and a realistic rendering. It's got all this extra detail. If you toggle this guy on, AO overlay in preview, it'll actually inject whatever you're doing here. So you can dial in with how dark it is and it'll put it on top. So we've added that. Doesn't really look like much has changed, but the real special part is outline mode. This is going to give you some thin outlines. And what's nice about this mode is there's actually a bunch of different settings to them. So this is typical outline mode. I've got it set to black at full throttle. That's one, you know, think of like a Photoshop layer, 100% opacity or zero opacity. That's what this guy is. So if I lower this, you see how that lessens? You know, you might wanna do that uh, talking about lessening, you can even just lessen the color so it's like a gray, so it's not so harsh. But this is giving you a nice stylized look. And the reason you should do some of this, I think it's really important in like early conceptual schematic design where you don't want the client to feel like it's a uh, finalized rendering or you're in the middle of the design, you know, from the AEC side. And you don't want to show them like a final product. I think this gives it a nice little look that it's like, hey, this is like a work in progress, helps define the geometry, makes things stick out a little bit more than when it's off, because then it's really just like up to the shadows to define that kind of detail. So once you have that on, you've got your main outline, which is this guy. I'm going to explain what the next settings do. And these are contours. So this might not mean much, but I've basically have two colors here or two line weights or pen weights, you know, um, we've got a dark black and we've got a medium gray. And I want you to pay attention to, we'll call them like the detail lines, the sub lines. They're not the main lines. So this, this is appearing on like really important pieces of geometry. It's coming around on outlines and the detail lines, the gray are coming on these like secondary lines. So anytime there's a new mesh, the outline line comes in. When there's a detail line, this guy kicks in. So you see that, you see all the gray here. If you're having a hard time seeing this, I'll just make it an obnoxious red so you can see. It's gonna take a little second. So you can see all the little nooks and crannies that this red injects itself into. It's not like the big drastic lines, it's just the, the ones with a little bit of detail. And I actually like having this on. So if you don't see this, you gotta click this button and then turn this on. And then you can play with you know how, how dark or light you want it to be. I think around 50 is fine. And then if you're wondering what line width is, this basically controls how thick those lines are, right? If you want them to be thicker, you raise it to 100. You want it to be less, put it at 50, which is the default, right? So it's a little before and after. It's really, really subtle. It does take a little bit to kick in, but trust me, it does happen. Um, so now the next stylized setting, this is a simple clay mode. And there's kind of like two clay modes in D5. There's the clay mode that happens from the AO tool when you have AO overlay and preview off. So this is on, this is off. So this will bake out as a rendering. Then you actually have the clay mode in here. This doesn't bake out. This is like a visualization mode. So when you go here, you're not really gonna see a big difference, but it's like one of these guys, you don't render it. So if you need it rendered, you have to go through this way, okay? So what we're doing here is we've got AO paired with a little bit of an outline. So you can see this going on and it gives it like a nice simple view. Um, I use this sometimes when I'm doing like draft renders, I call them geometry checks 
with clients where like, hey, you've given us all this stuff to model. Are you good with this? Does this look correct? Because you don't want to like go through everything and then you materialize it, texture it, light it, and then you render it. And they're like, oh, no, no, this is all wrong. Can you go back? And it's like, oh, my God. So <laughs> so use this as, as a geometry check. Um, and obviously, it looks like a draft because there's no materials. So I kind of like using this. So there's like a very like practical point to doing the stylized renderings. And then I think there's also like the aesthetic side, which all really, really important. Then the next style I want to talk about, I've been calling this like cat style. Um, what I've got here is a black background with white outlines. And all I did was I activated this guy right down here. So background basically just means what color do you want the background to be? And because you can choose any color out there, you can actually get kind of creative. Um, you know, I like this like salmon looking color, but you can go black. Makes me think of cad um, with a white outline. And it's just, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Um, it makes me think of like the days back in architecture school when I'd have to do this like manually and it would take forever. And it made me think of when I had to do isometric drawings. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if there's a way we can actually do that in D5. Well, in 2.11, we did get the isometric camera tool, which is this guy right here. So this basically makes it look like it's a 2D drawing. So all the lines are perfectly straight. Everything is on the same angle. There's no perspective. And this looks like a drawing that I would have to manually do. And what's nice about this is if you look at how the outlines are working, you've got the contour lines in and the main outline lines working, which is really nice. So you can play with line width here and that'll all look great. And this looks great. Like this is something I would, I would have definitely showed in school because this would take me literally like hours to do and here it's just being done in seconds so really really nice you don't need to do a black background i think it's fun you could go white and then black lines totally cool if you want to get fun with it i also recommend opening up color grading it's this guy right down here and you can actually just change the overall like look of the whole image um, if you don't want to manually do it here so i think that's kind of fun you can always go here and reset there's one more setting here that I want to talk about um, because at first glance, you probably don't really understand what it's doing. But right now I've got my outlines all checked on and you see how thick like all these trees are because I'm so far away. All this is going to do is when you check mark this, it's going to thin out things that are far away. If it's a small object and far away, it's going to be thinner. That's all it's doing. I generally just keep this on all the time. I don't know why you wouldn't. So these are the main stylized features in the real-time render engine, okay? There's the whole other side of post-AI, which is once you render, so let's say I just rendered something out, I go over to AI post-processing, I select my rendering, which I've done here, I go to preview, and now I can actually move it to a different style. We have all these stylized renderings like pen sketch, pencil sketch, and watercolor, which are great and useful, but again, this is at the end of the project where I've rendered out an image. It looks beautiful, there's no denying that, but this is not in the real-time render preview, okay? So just like, keep that in mind. I think these look beautiful, these are using the default settings, but if you wanna fly around and have it look stylized, you're gonna have to use the outline and AO method that I was just talking about. If you're just showing this to a client and you just want them to have like a loose gestural feel, totally use post AI. You've got both. Um, it's just this doesn't apply to the real time viewport. It'd be cool if it did, but you know, maybe that's for a future update, but you know, use the combination of the two. I think it's important to understand when to use what over the other. Um, but regardless, you can do stylized renderings in D5. It's not all about photorealism. Um, and I think that's, that's really important, especially in the world of architecture where you don't need photorealism all the time. So anyways, if you have any questions about this, this workflow and everything, comment below. I'll get back to you. You know I answer everything. And then, as always, if you liked the video and you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Helps the algorithm, helps me get the word out, and helps the channel grow. So I'll see you in the next video.